Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we're going to be covering a topic that not only helps you void your warranty, but it also makes your computer faster. So it's win-win, right? No. Well, anyway, today we're going to be covering video card overclocking. For my example, we're going to have a Radeon 5870, and we're going to walk you through the steps that it takes to turn up the speed of your video card past its stock rated speed, and also to test to make sure that the video card is operating correctly and that its temperatures are not exceeding the safe thresholds. So the first thing you'll probably notice about my Radeon 5870, I've used it in quite a number of videos on uh, this channel as well as my Linus Tech Tips channel, is that I have removed the stock cooler. This is the stock cooler. It is, it's okay. I mean, it's a great stock cooler, but it's woefully uh, insufficient if you're expecting to do any extreme overclocking. If you want to do that, you're going to need aftermarket air cooling or you're going to need some kind of water cooling. We're not going extreme today, but hey, it doesn't hurt. So I have the Thermalright Spitfire 6 installed on my 5870 here and I've also added some uh, supplemental airflow. So first of all I've got the 140 millimeter fan cooling the huge heat pipe fin array up here. Then I have a 120 millimeter fan propped against the video card down there giving me some incidental airflow onto the, uh, the RAM on the front. Then up at the back here, I've got another, uh, I believe, what is this? I think it's a 60 millimeter fan. I don't know what it is, maybe 70 millimeter anyway. That one's clipped onto the VRM heatsink. So the whole card is staying nice and frosty. Cooling is a huge part of overclocking that goes for both the CPU and for the video cards. So that was step number one in prepping the system to be overclocked. You can do minor overclocks on the stock cooler, but I wouldn't push it too far because it'll get loud and or your GPU will run quite hot. So we covered preparing your video card for overclocking. The next step is to show you the tools and utilities that you're gonna need to get the most out of your graphics card. Now, my new favorite overclocking utility is MSI Afterburner. It's awesome to say the least. It works for both Radeon and GeForce video cards. It has a number of options and it has the ability to adjust almost everything you need to get more speed, which is what this is all about. First of all, you can adjust the core clock so that's the frequency of the graphics processing unit. So the 5870 GPU, you can just turn up the speed with this little slider right here. You can adjust the memory clock. So that will adjust the speed of the actual frame buffer on your graphics card. And then you can also change the fan speed. Now I don't have a fan plugged into the header, so I won't be adjusting that. But if you are using a stock cooler, you can use this to ramp the fan speed up and make sure that your graphics card stays reasonably cool even if you're using the stock cooler. It'll be loud though. You can also adjust, and this is only for NVIDIA cards, the shader clock. So irrelevant for Radeon cards, but the shader clock will improve a GeForce card, both in games and in applications like folding at home, the GPU compute style stuff. So the last one that I haven't talked about yet is the core voltage. You're pretty much going to want to leave this alone if you're running stock cooler, but I could adjust it if I wanted to. Now, for overclocking your graphics card, what I generally recommend is, first of all, Google around. Find out what other people are getting with that graphics card, and then undershoot that by probably about 20 to 30%. So start there. So people are typically able to reach an overclock of, you know, um, well, uh, I'm a little bit limited with this graphics card because it's, it's stuck at 899 megahertz because of a BIOS lock. But what I would say is most people are getting 900 megahertz out of these cards. So I'd set it up around 880 and see where I go from there. So then once you've done that, you just click apply. Then what you have to do is you have to find a stability test. Now, I'm partial to 3D Mark 06 still. I'm old school like that. But you can also use, this one's very popular. This is a new FUR benchmark. So you just set the run mode to stability test. You set it to a resolution you find desirable. I don't want full screen, so I'm turning that off. And you click go. This will give you a way to A, Find out if your graphics card is stable. So you take a 3D image, you're either running 3D Mark or a game or some kind of uh, benchmark like this, and you want to watch it carefully. You want to look for any dots, lines, or any abnormality. These are called artifacts, and they can mean that your GPU is overheating, or they can mean that you've pushed it too far. You've got a couple of options if you see artifacts. You can actually turn up the voltage of the core on your GPU, or you can back off your overclock a little bit in order to uh, get your stability back. So 
Something to bear in mind is that you only want to adjust one parameter at a time. So you can see I only adjusted the core clock. I'm finding out if my core clock is stable at 881 megahertz. So far I can see that it is. I can also monitor my temperatures using Afterburner. So I've gone from 34 degrees when we started this all the way up to about 52 degrees, 53. Now I've already tested this bench and it only goes up to about 55 degrees which is way acceptable for this kind of a GPU. Honestly anything up to about 80 90 degrees is fine for a 5800 series. You can also monitor the GPU usage so that'll give you some idea whether you're seeing a worst case scenario or a best case scenario because this is running at 100% and I'm still only hitting 55 degrees. You can also monitor your clocks. So the actual clock speeds of the GPU are going to ramp up as soon as you enter 3D mode. So you can see it was running at only 300 megahertz in 2D mode and as soon as I started a 3D application it jumps up to 81 mega or 800 181 megahertz, which is exactly where I wanted it. So that pretty much covers um, that pretty much covers the stability testing. So basically, if you blue screen, your computer shuts off, you see any artifacts, back off what you were doing. Now I know that this card is good for. Oh, I don't want to adjust the voltage just now. I know this card is good for 899 and 1250. So by doing that, all I have to do is click apply, and I have automatically unlocked more performance from my graphics card. It's that simple. So why to overclock your video card seems pretty obvious. You get a little bit of extra performance, typically between 5 and 15 percent, and it, you're not paying for it. Now to actually buy an overclocked video card usually costs anywhere from, in this example, about 10 to 40 dollars more than buying a stock clocked video card, but there are a couple of advantages to buying a pre-overclocked one. First of all, it is actually guaranteed to run at that speed. And second of all, your warranty is going to be covered on it. Overclocking, like always, like with CPUs, graphics cards, anything you're overclocking is never a guarantee. So that means that if they can prove you overclocked it, you might not get warranty support with a couple of exceptions, including XFX and EVGA. And then there's also the fact that it just might plain not run at that speed. It might run at stock speeds and that's it. So if you buy a pre-overclocked product, you know for sure it's going to run at that speeds. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed our guide on how to overclock your video card and thank you for checking out NCIX Tech Tips.